Hey guys, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to my channel, Double Deuce here. Today, we're gonna build the new Auto single overhead cam engine. Um, it's basically an um, FSL 200. Um, it's probably the best deal you'll ever get on one of these little engines. Um, it's way under 200 bucks, way under. Um, and I've seen uh, 149, I've seen 1. 90 but that must come with the complete kit so it's under 200 bucks um it's compact the head's real small nice on it very high quality engine um i'm gonna touch base on a build but like i say uh go to sterlingkit.com um grab one before they all disappear because i have a funny feeling that these are going to be very popular it's it gives you guys the opportunity to take one of your builds and convert it to a nitro, a four-stroke nitro. You know, um, it's got the single can or single carburetor on the thing here. You know, like I say, it's a single overhead cam. Um, you know, twin cylinder, electric start. <laughs> It's what we've wanted for a long time, so stay tuned, and the build video might be a little long, but, you know, you can skip through it if you want. Anyways, guys, grab your favorite beverage, popcorn, smoke, whatever you want to do, and hang out with me today, so here we go. Okay, guys, we're going to get started on the directions um, for the new engine here. And you're going to find it when you go to toyandengine.com, download. We're going to go down to our engine. Okay, it says use your manual, FSL200 AC Auto in Chinese. And then it says user manual, FSL200 AC Auto in English. So, they've got the two... They got uh, Chinese and English there, so anyways, we're, when you click on that, you got to download it, you got to sign in, um, So, which I did, and I brought it up. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all the directions here, and this one here is in English, it's the auto motor. Um, they go through your introduction, uh, the catalog, they show you, you know, everything. And when you get to the bomb list on the bottom, that's uh, that's the one, the exploded views and all the stuff, comments and all that. Now, you got your safety warnings and instructions. You know, just be careful when you put these up and all that. You know, like don't don't start them in your hand, don't start them in your house like I do. Um, now this one here, this engine was designed for science experiments, model demonstrations. Motor car drive. It says, do not attempt that to use it for any other purpose. But, I mean, I, you know, if you want to make a pencil sharpener out of it or something, that'd be cool. But, so, they give you the exploded view of the cylinder head here, um, the engine body, the flywheel, <laughs> flywheel screw, not the starter motor. If you notice, that starter motor is humongous on this little engine because they've downsized the engine. Um, they call it an engine hood. I call it a valve cover. Um, then you got your glow plugs, exhaust pipes you know and so on so we're going to keep going down they show you the front of it with uh your pulleys the fan blades timing belt cooling fan drive wheel and you know this is this exhaust nozzle in the lower crankcase chassis they call it which i call it an oil pan because it does collect the oil goes in the front um in your carburetor they got the pump carburetor, which I went through a minute ago. And then they got your throttle alarm goes on the bottom. Now, you could probably turn this upside down if you wanted to, but I don't think you can by the way they made the intake manifold. And then they have your gaskets, your tools. Now, these are all numbered, guys, okay? Every one of these tools are numbered. 
all them gaskets and all that when you get to your blister pack now some of these decide to change homes during shipping so you know you kind of got to look at things and figure them out this is where it gets tough for the uh the assembly part of it but um so far, I didn't see many that, that switched areas, you know. But as you put it together, all these numbers will tell you what the screws are. Number 16 is an M3 by 10, you know. Then you got a pin here. It's an M2 by 12, you know. Um, then you got these up there. They're M2.5 by 12. So, I mean, all these screws and clips and all this stuff, you know, they give you a place to put them. Then they show you your blister pack um, with your rocker arms and, you know, your bearings and seals and your flywheel and or your flywheel and your starter um, thing, your valve cover, and your two pulleys there. Um, and then here's your belts, your lower crankcase cover, you know. Um, this is like a, oh, a spacer for your intake manifold. That's your intake manifold. Uh, that's your starter bracket. This here is your starter pinion for the belt. This is for your, you know, your fan assembly and all that. And um, then these here are your two pulleys, which they didn't quite make them perfect, but still. And then you got your block. It's number 60. 59 is your crankshaft. 58 is your carb. 53 is your pistons. And then... Looks like 54 would be your starter motor. So it starts off, how you put it together is you break out your crankshaft and you go through your blister pack and you find all these numbers, okay, and you match them up. Now, this does not have many doubled um, pins and seals and all this stuff. So you'll be able to see that number seven is a spacer washer, uh, 28 is a seal, 29 is a bearing, number four is a pin for your flywheel and your starter bearing and 59 is your crankshaft so 37 is your st starter flywheel okay it has a one-way bearing and it tells you right there be careful the dark side of the bearing cover faces outward so if you put this on all right and you turn it to your left counterclockwise and it just spins free you got it on backwards but if you turn it and the pistons are moving, because these run counterclockwise. And then they show you how to, you know, you got your pin there. You put on your starter, uh, one-way bearing. And then here's your flywheel. There is a crush collar here. It says crush nut washer, I should say. Number six and then number five. Um, and you put them on that way. So that's your crankshafts already put together now. Now you're going to do your rings. Now, when I spoke before about the piston ring and cylinder liner, they have to be matched. Okay, so if you take the ring out of this one, don't put it in that one. Keep it in that cylinder. It doesn't matter which piston you use, but just make sure that when you that ring is on whatever piston, you put it back in that hole. Because that's how they, um, they set the ring gaps on them. <coughs> and then you got your... 60 is your ring, which will be in the cylinders. Okay, they'll be in the cylinders. Um, and then this is your um, ring compressor tool. You lay that on top and you push it down. But you cannot have your rod caps on when you do it because it's too hard to get in there and take them off. So this is another thing I'm going to get to. When you take off your rod caps, you'll notice on the very edge of the matched rod and cap are two notches okay and i'll try to find them now for you and let's see if i can get out my my stuff over here because i got it everywhere I'm break out my computer and do my downloads and all this stuff okay now you'll see the rod there now see it's got a nice bronze bushing in there and then when you turn it to this side, you'll see this tiny little mark right there. Okay, always make sure when you put this rod and this lower cap on, those match together. 
um, and the bearing. Try not to change the you know the the bearing. Just keep it keep it all done. Now these have really nice long long rod bolts, and they're not the they're not the cheap black ones that I had seen with the other engines there. These are very nice. Uh, they're stainless, and um, these might be a better alternative to that. So always keep in mind, you know, that notch always goes together. It doesn't matter if the rod's facing forward or backward. Just make sure that um, those notches line up. Usually what I try to do is make all these notches face forward, you know, Face it forward away from the flywheel. That way, when you put it together and have to tear it apart, you remember in your head, hey, you know what? You know, the notches face forward. So now we've got your rotating assembly is all put together here with your pistons and your crankshaft. You have the two gaskets here, number 47, and 46 is your lower engine mount, which I call an oil pan. Now, when you break into your blister pack, these are all your hardware, okay? And they'll tell you at the bottom what the hardware is. Now, this is extremely important for you guys. Um, now, when you get your camshaft out, you're going to put a pin in it. Now, this pulley can go either one way or the other, all right? But if you noticed in here... There's a small notch on the very bottom of the camshaft, and there's a small notch on the pulley. Make sure they line up, because if you have them 180 out, you're going to have to turn your camshaft 180 out. You know, so your cam's going to be out of time. But make sure these all match together when you assemble all the stuff. You got your pin, you got two eclipse. A seal a bearing and your pulley okay so it'll look like that when it's all done just make sure those two little circles are in the same area because when you put it in your engine and line it up you slide that in there and then on the back there's a seal with an e-clip here a seal and a bearing that all go in first. This E-clip will go on after these all are in. So you put the seal in, you put the bearing on it. Now that's what that tool was for, that long shaped tool um, to help tap some of these bearings in place here. Um, because you can put your seals in with this and you can also, you know, if, you, if your bearing ain't going in tight enough, you can just give it a couple of love taps there. Don't overdo it. And then, then you'll put your E-clip on your camshaft. So now your cam is in there. It's all done. And then they want you to mount the head with the head gasket on the block. After that, they want you to put your rocker arms together. Now you have your rocker arm bars here with the shafts on them. Now these will only fit one way. All right. Pay attention to the way... The bumps are here you know this is your camshaft side here the one with the big bump on the bottom goes to your uh, your valve covers here you know the that make them work you slide these two over make sure they turn freely before you put them on uh, make sure you don't have this on backwards I mean you could flip it around if you want I mean if you do it do it backwards and then you have number 15 those are your Got your hardware that goes into to mount them down. This is where that thing, I didn't know what it was. It's an intake manifold, and it has a boss on here to screw into the carburetor. So we have 18. We got two number 18s. You got a number 50, a 48, and a 49. These are your gaskets that mount and sandwich this all together so you can put your carburetor on there. Now that's done, you'll see that there's a number 21 that goes over the shaft of the carburetor to seal this off here, all right? These number 18s, there's two of these that will mount through these holes here and bolt the carburetor right to the intake manifold. Then we'll have 
um, a number two bolt that comes through a bearing here that just mounts to the head. It's an idler pulley. This is for your water pump, uh, or no water pump, but your, uh, your belt tensioner area. Um, this right here will, you know, two number threes and the number 43 will slide within this. Um, what I've done is I put, sometimes I'll put a little grease on that and here so it slides back and forth freely because sometimes a powder coating might, you know, kind of make it tight. So, here's your timing marks. This is another important thing here. Now that you got your camshaft with the little dot down, okay, make sure the cam is facing down. Make sure the crankshaft pulley has the dot that's facing down. And then this is how you put your belt on. You, you install it that way, and then you can adjust it afterwards. But while adjusting it, make sure you're not a tooth off. Because when it's all said and done, and everything's nice and tight, these two dots have to face down, okay? Um, I usually put my fan blades on after I set my pulley in there, you know, just to, because sometimes it's hard to get the belt lined up and everything with all the fan blades on there, so... You know, just kind of hang and wait over that. Um, your hardware is number nine. Um, the blades are number eight. And your fan blade runner is 45. Now, this is the exhaust that comes out of the oil pan down here. This is going to expel all your extra oil that comes down through that lubricates the crankshaft. It's going to come out here. You can put a hose on this and run it into... Oh, a container or something to contain the extra oil that comes out because these do spit out a lot of oil. Now, we got the starter bracket, okay, number 51. And then we have our spacer. It's a plastic spacer that goes on here, number 44. And number 10 is your two um, screws that hold it on. We got your exhaust manifolds here with the number threes. And you got your gaskets, which are number 12. So there should be two number 12s, two 42s, and there should be four number 3s in your, um, you know, your hardware kit here. I should say yeah, everything's in here. And once you get all that mounted up, we'll go to the next step. It's installing your starter motor. So now there's two grub screws that hold. Um, the starter pulley onto the motor. Sometimes, uh, I did notice on this one, they made this smaller. Sometimes you can't put this on until the motor's on there, um, which can get a little tough because you gotta slip the belt over. But if you take the belt number 40, um, and your 52 is your screws, you need two of these, you need two 11s, um, so kind of slide everything together loose, get the belt on there, you can tighten all this stuff up. Now there is a flat spot on this shaft here for the starter motor, so you're going to want one of the grub screws to be on the flat spot. And um, that way it'll, it'll tighten up nice and neat, and it shouldn't have a problem there. Now here's your rocker cover, it's just your gasket, which was in the gasket kit, with your head gasket and your lower cover gasket. And then here's your screws, number threes again. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. 32 is your rocker cover, 33 is your gasket, you know. And you should be all together by then. So as we get to the bottom of the directions here, because I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to make just a video just so you guys can do this. They tell you everything you need to do, you need two glow plugs. They're F-style glow plugs because they're for four strokes. Um, they need one and a half volts of power and all that stuff. Um, so the starter igniters that come with it, you can run a 7.4 volt um, two cell or two, yeah, you know, two cell battery on that. And, um, you know, it'll be a, it'll be enough to run your igniters. Um, usually with these two cylinders, you, you only need it to start it. You don't really need to keep them running. Like, I noticed my Toy and V8, you got to get the idle up really, really high in that thing for it to stay running. And then it, it has a lot of flat spots in it because I'm still working on that. Uh, 20 to 25% nitro. Um, uh, they haven't got a gasoline thing for this yet. So, um, you know, 
Uh, and when you run these things at really high speeds, they eat glow plugs. They do, you know. They recommend a 100cc fuel tank because they don't want you to run it for a whole long time to overheat the thing really bad. Um, and the way the thing is made, the oil charge and the nitro fuel come in the top and cool the head down. Then, you know, the heat will rise. So they kind of meet and it kind of keeps it um, well balanced as far as heat goes. Uh, your starter supply, you know, 7.4 volt, you know, I got a 25C rating on the lithium battery, uh, you know, two cell. Um, and keep them, you know, run it outside, you know, put a platform down there. Um, you know, don't touch the fan, you know. And then they got the adjustment on these things. You know, they talk about the two pulleys, make sure they're, you know, all the things are down at the same time. Check your power supply. Your initial oil settings and all this, I'll get to that in a second. Um, because they tell you, when leaving the factory, each engine has completed the oil needle setting. But, see, this is a kit. So, it's not, it's not been set yet. So, if you use, <clears throat> oh, say your main oil is two turns out, which is the one on the brass side. The one on the throttle side is only one and a half turns. Start there and see where it goes. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there, you know. So, but now we'll get to the hardware. Oh, they tell you a lot of, uh, you know, it takes a lot of air to run it. So to keep your throttle setting at 1.5 millimeters open on your throttle position. Uh, when you start it, open it up to be about 30% to start it. And because uh, the break-in period can be frustrating because these do run and shut off and run and shut off, you know, so it's not going to be a big deal. But, and they got your care and maintenance here. Um, you guys can probably freeze the video at any single time you want to read this stuff. And they call it debug or bug checking. Um, that's when you're trying to figure out why it won't run or, you know, why it ain't running smoothly or whatever. They give you the three views of the size of the engine and uh, like I say it's a lot shorter than the other ones they give you your bore stroke um, you know your displacement and your output is like 105 PS so on 30% nitro so that's around what one horsepower I do believe we're close to one horsepower and they give you multiple view. They give you the exploded view, which you get in your directions. Um, their commitment. And here's the list of screws. They tell you exactly what the screws are and what the stuff is in the direction. So, say, you know, number one is a, you know, M4 by 25 millimeter screw. Say you stripped one out and you want to get one. You can just get on here. And then you can go to your hobby store, you get online, or you can contact Sterling Ketter, you know, and they'll, um, they'll send you what you need. So, and the belts, what I usually do with the belts, I always take a photograph of the belts on my phone. That way I know before the, you know, the, the lettering wears off the belts that I know what size belt it was. So I can go look for it, um, you know down the road if I need one so because belts a lot of these are printer belts so uh, and all these belts are like custom made sometimes and everything else but you'll still be able to find them online if you can't get them from the manufacturer anymore so anyways hope that was the start of the directions here for you guys and We'll go from there. I'm going to come back to the top. Bring, boom. And uh, I'm going to start putting this thing together. And like I say, I'll try to touch base as much as I can with the directions so you guys have a clear view of what you're seeing. So, so hang on and we'll get back to it. Okay, everybody, we're going to start with the crankshaft. So I got my crankshaft stuff out here. 
and I'm going to show you everything that goes in it. This is number seven. It's a big, bigger washer. It's one of the bigger ones in the kit. Mine moves spaces in here. I had to find it. It should be here, but it was clear over here. So look in your kit, kind of match everything up. You'll need number 28. It's a seal. All right, I'm going to hold this up there. You'll see one side of the seal is closed and the other side is open. This goes towards the inside of the engine. This goes towards the outside. That way when the compression inside hits the seal, it, it expands it. So, And then we have number 29, which is our bearing, which was in our blister pack here. We have 29 here, number 28 was here. So, that's it with the valve cover. Now, they tell you to put all this stuff together up here first. First. Then the seal. Then. Wow, it's nice and tight. Woo. This is uh, when they give you the tools. And you just kind of walk that on there a little bit back and forth. If you can't get them on, don't force them. Get a piece of emery cloth or something and kind of sand it down just a little bit. Bearing on it already. Now, I had to use this tool here to help tap this bearing on. And it's really tight. That's why they give you these in the kit. I uh, just like, you know, get it up there, get it centered. Like so. And then tap your bearing down. Now the seal goes with this side inward. This side is facing outward. That way the compression will help seal it. So you put a little put a little bit more grease on there because I uh I like to kind of grease everything up a little bit because it helps the pin stay in place too. Oh, there we go. Now, so I put a little grease on the shaft there. Get a rag. And we will put this on so it's facing inward, like so. And the grease will help lubricate it. Now, inside this grooved area here, this is where you want to put your pin. And the grease helps it stay in place. So now there's the crankshaft. It's almost ready to go. Um, this is supposed to go on the outside, I guess, before the pin goes in. Yes, it does. See, I'm still learning too, guys. We'll take the pin over here. We'll put this shim, which fits perfectly over the crankshaft. There's only one in the kit. Then we'll put the pin in. There, now we're ready for the flywheel. And the starter on number two here. Ready for the Holy. Now, it says keep the brown side outward. This is the brown side here. This is not the brown side. All right. You'll know when you put it on there. Get it turns to the left counterclockwise. Now, try to get that on there. Things are really tight on this crankshaft. Boy, it's just super tight. Want to make sure you're not. Damaging nothing And if you have to you use this again you Just give it a little tap tap So that's what I did I took a socket Set it on there tap it down. Don't hit it too hard So now your bearing Should spin free clockwise and it should turn counterclockwise or lock see how it's turning the, it's turning the whole crankshaft when I turn it this way but this way it spins free 
that's how you want to set this up the brown sides out don't damage the brown area when you're putting it on there you got a socket I used a eight or nine millimeter nine I used a nine because it was a little loose on there a nine millimeter deep well socket just tap it on with that all right now what's our next move here we got the flywheel number 38 here's your flywheel you'll see on the back these are not these are not threaded these have a press fit with the pin on them right there a little keyway for the pin you slide that over this actually it's awful tight it ain't sliding over hmm could be the powder coating that is super tight like it ain't even sliding on there's no way you can slide that on there unless you clean this out so so it's too tight to fit in here I'm gonna have to open this little hole up right here and I'll be back it's just too tight okay now when you get your flywheel on Take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet and tighten it up the rest of the way. Just give it a little crank. Nothing big because you'll probably be taking this off to put a clutch pilot on it. You just need it to bring it in tight enough to make the bearing, everything seat together with the seal. Now we're going to move on to the rings. Now, what I did was I numbered a piston number one and a piston number two. All right. So how you get the rings out? Upside down on the first cylinder here, you just slide this down through the hole on the inside. It'll go in because there's no ring on it, like so. And then just gently push down to push the ring out. Now, you got it down there, take the ring, get it started with one side and then just kind of walk it around like that you see what i'm doing there you get it started on the one side here in the groove and then you just kind of like a slinky you just walk this thing around until it pops in make sure the ring is free everything's good you see i've got the rod cap off now i don't want to put it on this way because the tab hole is on the bottom. Now we got the two tabs lining up. So what I'll do is turn this around and I'll put this piston in like so, this way. But we have a tool for this. So I'm gonna get the other piston ring on and we're gonna do this up. Make sure you don't mix the caps up between the two rods make sure that rod stays on that cap okay don't mix them up i'm gonna use their fandy dandy tool set that they gave me i'm gonna break these loose i really like the new hardware that they put in these i'm glad that they changed it because the other stuff these um these heads would break right off so i think they went with a higher quality um hardware for the rods at least the rods anyway i mean everything else can be you know it could be fair to middle in there when it comes to um the quality of the hardware but when you got a rod spinning it however many thousand rpms the last thing you need is it to like decide to exit and leave the scene because that's where all the catastrophic damage comes from so here we go now piston number two upside down throw it in there pop it out cool now if you notice on the inside of the block here these are chamfered that means that they're they're cut at an angle so you know you could probably put the pistons in from the bottom without a problem you probably wouldn't even need this tool here that they give you but the tool is angled from one side to the other too so if you put it in the top over here you notice it's really loose if you put it in the bottom down here, it's really tight. So you want this little lip 
upward when you uh, install the rod. So, okay, ring number two, hook it over. Don't get don't get gorilla on this. Just be very ginger with it, and just try to like separate it and walk it around. Normally, a little lubrication helps, but. Sometimes we like it dry. Did I say that? <laughs> Maybe. Anyways, there we go. Ring number two is on piston number two. So, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put the pistons in. So hang on. Okay, so now, we got the rings on. I put them on dry, okay? And the reason I do that is because they're so hard to get on when you're trying to slip them around there. And you're going to want lubrication on this when you put it in there. So I take a little grease, the same red grease that the assembly stuff they give me, and I kind of smash it into the wrist pin hole and the ring. That way, when you first start this, it's not dry, and it has a sticky seal in here to help keep the compression in until you break it in so put a little on there take your finger just wipe it in back and forth you ain't got to have a lot on there just enough to just to make it happy because you're going to lube the lower end here before you do anything else too so okay i make my little mark forward Put the piston, put her on there, right there. Let it slide in. Set the rod in the hole. Now, from here on in, I usually use something like the butt of a plastic end here to help start the piston in to the hole. There we go, it's going in. Now, you just push down. Hold both down, push down, give a little tap. Well, uh, number two pistons in. Let's lube up number one. Now, uh, you say, oh, a lot of grease on there. Yeah, there is. But what is going to happen when you fire this thing up, it is going to blow all that grease everywhere and everything that you could not grease when you're assembling it. It'll aid in giving it a nice solid compression when you first start it. That way you're not cranking it forever. So, now one and two are in. Now we got our rod bearings here. And I'm going to grease the crankshaft before I put that in. But first, going to check our directions to see what they say. Because we want to do this by the book. How we do it. Okay. At this part, I'll bring the camera up here. To show you what they say. We'll zoom in on it. It just says, put your rods and pistons in. Make sure your tabs go together for each one. I got number two on this side, and I got number one on this side over here. So I know it's going to be cool. And then we got to put the crankshaft in. So normally, I would use shock oil, but I'm going to use grease this time. And I'm going to back the camera out here. Let me show you, I'm just going to grease the front bearing and the seal and the rear bearing and the seal and the rod journals. Just give a little grease on them rods to help those bronze bushings out a little bit. Because when you oil stuff, sometimes the oil gets in the way of the thread locker on your rod so this is how I do it there's probably other ways that people want to do it so 
Okay. Let's do this. Now you notice the curved side of the block is on this side. It's over here. The curved side's over here. And I'm putting the crankshaft in just like this. Make sure your rods are straight. You can actually push them up and set your crankshaft in like so. Push your rods down. Push your crankshaft in there. Make sure it's kind of centered. It's tight. I'm telling you, it's super tight. Tight, tight. But, I'll show you what to do after that. Now, you want to bring the your one or two piston up or down or whatever and then you want to just push it up with your finger and try to align these things so they come up freely because you're going to want that one to be all the way up when you uh I'm trying to move this pulley back a little bit here because it's rubbing there we go. Now you want that pulley or that uh, journal all the way to the top. Try to get your... I try to set them up on their side like this. And then push them in like so. Like that. Bang. Done. Clean off the extra grease. And then number two which was already way down, so. Now, we've got number one in, and what I'm gonna do is clean off the extra grease on this and just put it on the journal. And I'm gonna get some Loctite, and I'm gonna put in the rod cap on, on the first journal number one. So, hang on a second, let me get my Loctite, and I'll be right back. So I use the blue Loctite from Permatex. Um, sometimes you got to use the red, but the blue you can uh, you can remove it. The red you have to really kind of heat it up because it, once it's in there, it's in there, you know. And make sure our little dimple is facing forward because that's. Uh, if you look on the rod, the dimple is facing forward there, too. And we're going to put it together. I love building engines. I really do. I've done it all my life. Um, it's just been a favorite pastime. Um, you know, even though I've, I've done a lot of crazy things in my career with, you know, engineering and making stuff and um and you know and, and right now i mean i did some mechanical work as a kid but yeah i just um you know when you're an engineer you don't really get to have your hands dirty you don't get to fix the things you make um you get to design them which is cool but you never get a chance to service them unless you decide to do a little racing and that's what i did Growing up as a kid, I did a lot of racing and uh, a lot of street racing, actually. But, you know, your life is all about you. It's about your choices and what you like to do. I mean, my oldest son, God rest his soul, he was into cars heavy like I was. Um, and he was into history. This guy would find cars like you would not believe up here in New England. And... Uh, like we would we'd drag them out of people's barns someday i'm gonna fix some cars you know what i mean those cars and we would you know we would pick through them all and then we decide to say hey you know what like, let's keep the ones we want to keep and then we'll sell the ones that we want to sell so we actually brought the world you know all new options on super rare cars that were hidden since like the 70s in people's barns up here. Now my youngest son, he was into music, man. This kid was like, you know, he's really good at music. So he had his own band, you know, he still writes music. 
he doesn't play as much as he wants, which I've been trying to like, you know, wake him up a little bit to that. But see, that's his thing. And my thing is, is engines and making RC cars. And I do body work now to live. Imagine that, I work on a frame machine, you know. I like, I will unstretch the cars after the front wheels under the front seat. That's what I do. We have all new technologies. Don't over tighten these things, guys. Just give them a little snug because you got Loctite on them. So we have all these new technologies that come out. And uh, I still do it the old school way. But now, okay, it's in. You see the rotating assembly is in here now. And uh, yeah, it's a little stiff. But this is what it's supposed to be. You see? Now, if you want to use your one-way bearing, you're going to have to hold the crank in place. It'll turn freely backwards, and then it'll turn the crank this way, counterclockwise. That's the way it should be. Now, we'll see what they say next. My computer keeps going off because I'm on battery. Now they want you to do the camshaft, so I'm going to take a break for a second. Um, maybe enjoy a beverage, and I'll come back, and we'll do... The camshaft, because that's really important, okay? So, stay tight, guys. I'll be right back. I'm going to put all this together in one big video. It's going to be a long one. Okay, we're going to get to the camshaft now. We're going to get in our blister pack with our belts and our lower oil pan or cover or engine mount or whatever. Here's your camshaft. This is your camshaft. You see one end has two slots for e-rings and a hole for a pin the other side only got one slot for an e-ring now it says here I'll zoom in on it for you guys so we're going to need number oh, 36 which will be in this blister pack with your valve cover now there's two of them in here Okay, one has a bearing in it. You don't want that one. You want the one that has no bearing and has a slot in the back of it. This is the one you want. All right. This is the one that you're going to put on later. This has this is your idler pulley. Has the bearing in it. Okay. Now we'll get that out. We'll get the camshaft out. Okay, thirty-four. 27 and two 17s here. All right. So now you're going to look in your blister pack here. I'm going to zoom out. There's two flange bearings here next to where the starter pulley and the flywheel were. Two flange bearings. I'll put them down here and I'll show you guys how they are in a second. And up here is your cam seal right next to the valve cover. This is the seal you're going to need for the front which I believe is 27 there's two of them in here you want for the front one for the back and you got two flange bearings one for the front one for the back so it says to put on an e-ring so we'll get to our blister pack here with our hardware and number 17's are in this corner over here as you can see there's two eclipse in there all right so i'll put it upside down so you can see it there's actually three of them I'm glad they gave us an extra so i'm going to get those out and we're going to put this together and sometimes when you're trying to reach in your blister pack and you can't get stuff out of it okay <laughs> i know it's going to sound crazy but take a screwdriver a little tiny screwdriver like this dab of grease a little dab will do you like bro cream and when you uh reach in there they'll come right out if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver to get them out with and some of these have a little oil bath on them so they're kind of sticking to the bottom i ain't scared all right there's two we got number one number two
clean off my screwdriver. Now, we're gonna fold down here where we have our pulley, our camshaft, two bearings, two seals, two clips. We're gonna need a pin. The pin is number four, which is probably uh, the same other pin that was uh, the same size that went on the back of the crankshaft. I'm glad they made these the same size because some of the other engines, they were all different sizes. So anyways, now they were like, I had to like ream the, the pulley open here. Now you see that we have mark on the camshaft, mark on the pulley. Match them up to the same holes. That's how the timing should be set. Seal. Bearing. Slide them all the way in as far as you can get them. And they do have other tools here to help overcome in the bag, like so. I get tired of working inside this bag. Did I tell you guys I got rid of my old bag? I uh, got a divorce a long time ago. I am so glad I did, because if I wouldn't have... I don't think we guys will be chatting tonight. Okay. Seal. Bearing. E-clip. Pin. Pulley. Match up the gear holes here. Down below. Well, there we go. Hold on. Yeah, this camera just ain't focusing tonight, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, see? We got it down, down. We're back on the thing. Let me get this here so it doesn't fly out of the living room. Put it on the front. Pull out of the bag. If somebody ever said that a plastic bag would come in great for building a hobby car, I'd be like, yeah, you mind. You know, you're crazy. You know. But now we have everything pretty much set there. And we gotta bring that pairing back. But still, this is the picture. This is the picture. You see, even though it showed the thing at the end, I still got drawn up when their their poor directions are. But they're the only thing we got, guys. They make great engines. Um, I don't know if this engine is going to be a contender with, uh, you know, to put in a project. But this is supposed to be uh, educational. So I'm going to. You know me, I'm going to bend the rules. I'm just going to put it in a project, you know. I already have one. I'll figure it out. Now, the camshaft. This is where I was confused because the cylinder head has a... <laughs> this, is where, this is where I sit down. When I look at an engine, all right, I try to figure out what goes where, how can this thing work. And so now we got... They're offset. The cylinders are offset here, this way, to the glow plug, which I thought was pretty cool. However, the way they want you to put this together is like so. So, when you put this over there, it gives you a super nice opening 
inside to the cylinders. Because you see it's offset here. It's wider here than it is here. But yet they brought the glow plugs right super tight within the cylinder there. Because um, I know a lot of engines, they have them backwards and they got them shielded over here. You know, so there's like a little cave in in here for some of the engines that are, you know, that I've dealt with in the past. So I'm glad to see that. I'm very happy. Um, and so we'll put it in like so. Camshaft goes this way. Now, let's get some grease out here because we don't want to, we don't want to tear the seal. We'll put a little, a little lube in there. A little lube on the seal itself with the bearing. Like so. Throw in our camshaft. And this is where it gets kind of fickle because when you when you really push hard on the seal it expands when it expands it doesn't want to set in nice and tight so try to get like a something in there like a screwdriver or something just kind of walk that seal in there because this keeps our models clean you know or our desktop or whatever we build with this stuff it keeps them nice and clean it keeps the the oil from spilling out everywhere and so you just kind of like push it down that's where the grease comes in guys so you get that bearing in there that once the bearing starts to seed in there it'll push the seal in now i use the butt end of a screwdriver which is plastic to try to move things along in my life here like so that way you don't damage nothing that way it's in you didn't use a hammer and believe you me there's been times where i've used a hammer so now back on the back side a little more grease i hope you guys are enjoying this video because like sometimes i talk too much but i get bored i really ain't got nobody to talk to you know so my only means of communication sometimes are just hanging out with you guys Remember, the face of the seal goes outward. The open end goes inward. Because you got to keep all the juices sealed inside of this engine. And push it in. Like so. Okay, so I push the seal in with the screwdriver just by doing this. Just going around and around and around and let that thing ride in there. Now we'll install the flange bearing. Remember the flange goes on the outside. And then we use our bearing tool that they gave us because it gets really tight from here on in. And we will tap this bearing in. around a little bit actually this is the wrong one I think it's this one here it's for your camshaft the smaller one it is it sets right over there so you don't knock the flange off or damage the bearing Now, when you look at that, the bearing's in. Yeah, I pinched my finger. It happens. But you'll very see it. There. You'll see that little groove there where that E-clip goes on there. So we get back in our kit, and we get the last E-clip out of the pack there that was destined for this. Grease. Probably should have got them all out at the same time, but it is what it is. Now, what I'll do is put it back in my bag over here. Sorry, guys, some of the stuff ain't on camera, but I'm going to, you know, I have to, like, it's hard to watch and be there at the same time. So, get my bag out here and put it in the bag because I don't want to lose any of this stuff.
thank God we got the bag. Now I'll put the igniters back in it and it'll be a little greasy, but now our camshaft is in and it's time to write. So when you set it in, it'll be like that. Both marks on the bottom. And we can grease the crap out of all this stuff in here when we assemble it. So now that right there was probably some of the most tedious parts of the build. Putting your rods and pistons in, your crankshaft, um, and you know, figuring out the directions uh, where the seals go in the crank, you know, or the camshaft. But the rest is pretty straightforward. It's just bolting stuff together. The rocker arms can be a little intriguing, and I will touch on that too. So I'm gonna start with putting the cylinder head on it because we're done with the cam. Now we'll get our hardware out for that. They're number 13s, a number 57 head gasket, which would be in the bag here. They used a graphite head gasket on this. It's graphite, like the L400s. Um, but being it's not water-cooled, I think it might be all right. Because um, I noticed the graphite gaskets didn't really quite live up to the water pressure that um was coming out of the the l400 there was a lot of water pressure in there even though they really never boiled over much but every now and then they would blow a head gasket so we'll go back in our little kit here we're going to look for number 13s and they are here so they look like an m3 by 14 and uh, 15 is an m3 by 14 also and we do have another um, Eclip set in here too, but it looks like they changed positions. So, the M3 by 14, huh? Because I, you know what I noticed about this was, okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six of those, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six black ones, and we have two um, that are just stainless. So I imagine the black ones will go into the head and the other two are going to be a surprise somewhere so we'll get these out Six. set that out to the side oh we got two head guys oh, that's why <laughs> all right not a cool thing. Not cool at all. Yeah, you got a broken head gasket right out of the right out of the gate. So it should set like this with the wide side to the one side, the other. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to start some of these um, into actually I probably used all their tools. Because I have mine, but actually I'll use mine. I use my old my old reliable handy handy dandy harbor freight you know bang it out do it up and I'll put in one here and I'll put in one over here like so now with the L400s you couldn't put the camshaft in because there was a couple of them that were hidden under the camshaft so I'm going to put these in here, and then I'm going to try to gingerly put the gasket on without ruining the gasket because they're so flimsy. You know, the Toyin V8 has a stainless head gasket, which I thought was really cool. I don't know why these guys chose to use this again, even though the Toyin was water-cooled also. All right, you get two in there, get them started with your gaskets. Make sure your gaskets, you know, don't come to play anywhere um, in, within the cylinder. I'm surprised you haven't put the lower pan on yet. You'd think they'd want that um, kind of set in there before things got too far. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start a couple on here. I usually don't lock tighten my head bolts. I don't. Um, because Loctite, you know, you can remove it with heat, so it's still, it'll come out, you know, unless you need to seal them up, 
or something. And there we go. Now I could have all these fancy tools where I could zip them in with all my snap on, you know, electric tools and everything else, but you know, I always like building things by hand. I like checking it out. I like feeling, you know, the ain't nothing worse than you, you think you got something and then you find out that the screw went in sideways and your power accessory decided to wipe the threads out on it. Probably the longest six head bolts you ever seen me put in, guys. <laughs> I'm not even tightening them yet. I do have a micro torque wrench um, that I have to go to work and get because I didn't expect to get this engine today. I really didn't. Um, when I was invited to do the new Toy and X Power, and that it was all set up there, but. I also had this coming uh, from Sterling Kit and some other things coming there. And so I kind of cleared my whole schedule because I took this week off. I always take the week off after Thanksgiving just to chill and put up videos and have a good time. But I took this week off, but they couldn't come through with the shipping because there wouldn't be enough time for them to get it to me. So I was kind of bummed about that, but they, you know, they're... They're trying, I'll put it that way. You know, they're trying to evolve. Which is cool because, like I said, this is the dawning age of this stuff. So, when this came in the mail today, it was kind of like an unplanned pregnancy. I didn't know. I was happy boy, you know what I mean? So, now, let's see what they say next on these directions. Okay, head gaskets in. Ah, rocker arms. Yeah, we got to do these rocker arms. It's going to be a little intense, and I'm going to do one on camera, but I'll be right back. Okay, we got our rockers out and our rocker shafts, but in my excitement to get this thing together, I skipped number, step number 17. If you see these here, these are the gaskets. For the lower pan and i mentioned there that i said isn't that weird that they wouldn't have you put the pan on yet but any of you guys were savvy enough to see that i skipped that step you'll probably make a comment on it um you know why because i'm not perfect man i just i build just like you guys do seven six eighteen seventeen so i went from putting the rods in totally skipped the the lower pan all right, so we're going to put the pan on now, and we'll do it up. So, now the gaskets they give you, if you see them, I'm going to pick them up with some tweezers here or some neat on those pliers. You'll see the gaskets have a wide end on one side and a shallow on the other because the wide end goes towards the front like so, like that. Now normally, I would put a little silicone seal between the bearing and that, but I don't have any right now because I used it all up on my Ingemore V8. So, here we go. We're going to put that down. We got the seal down there. Um, and we need, we need six number 16s, which are in here. Six number 16s, they're a 3 by 10 millimeter, um, and we'll put them in now, and we'll get the lower cover on this thing, because I screwed up, guys, I'm sorry, but I'll never ignore my mistakes, I will own them all, so now I gotta get some lubricant. I use Worth HHSK to lubricate the rotating assembly. 
just a squirt here, squirt there. Now that all the Loctite's in there, that way the piston pin, the cylinder liners, and the uh, the rods and the rod caps. Now you can use, I've used silicone oil for the shocks. I've used that to do it too. Because it doesn't matter because it washes right away. As soon as this thing fires up, um, the oils from the, uh, the nitro fuel will actually penetrate and just wash everything out that little hole in the front here. So don't be scared, guys. I was going to say, where'd my holes go? I'm not wearing my glasses tonight because I didn't want to look like the, the dude that made Pinocchio. I got my uh, nad smash there from a guy at work. I worked with there, old Chip. Chip Nielsen there. He uh, he said I look like, I can't remember the guy's name that that made Pinocchio. He goes, he had the same glasses. And, yeah, as we get older in the hobby, sometimes we got to wear them. You know, when I say guys, wear it with pride. Now, the gasket they give you looks like a Teflon style gasket. So I didn't put any um, grease or nothing on it because it is very, it has a lot of thickness to it. So when you tighten it down, it'll actually squish out and seal off everything. Now, there's no way to torque these bolts correctly. So what I usually do is I start in the center here, one here, like so. Give it a little twist after I snug them down. Then I'll go to the opposite corner here. I'll snug it down. Then I'll go to the front corner over here, snug it down. Then I'll go to this side, snug it down. Then I'll go to this side snug it down then i'll go back to this one here this way here you're you're making a cross hatch pattern through the whole thing and you're not smashing the gasket all on one side or the other and or you're not flexing or stressing the aluminum pan because these do break if you especially under high vibration they do break but all right so Thanks for uh, sticking there and watching me again through my mistake. And we'll just cut to the chase now and we will get to the rocker arms. Because these are kind of intense. So in my gasket kit, before we get to the rocker arms, I don't have these 249s. These are not within my gasket kit. I only have a valve cover gasket. Oh, they slid them in here. Thank God. Look at that, huh? See, this is how you learn, guys. They're in within the, uh, the spacer. They stuck them within the spacer. So I do have the gaskets now. Alright, I was worried about that because Sometimes um, things are omitted, and back in the old days when I worked for General Motors, like Chevrolet, um, they used to omit parts and leave them out because their theory was parts that are omitted and left out for a reason cause no warranty problems. So that's, that's the, uh, the definition of that. So we'll get a little more grease here. I'm gonna grease the pins up because these are under a lot of friction right from the get-go. And you want some kind of lubrication on these right away. Um, and the reason I'm using grease is because, um, of course they didn't give us grease for this, but you, you have to grease all this stuff with grease the red grease that you know they uh they get a premium for that stuff <laughs> it's just basically um from what i learned it was high temp 
um, red marine grease, which you can buy at your local parts store. If you have an auto parts store or a Walmart or a Kmart or some kind of Home Depot, they sell all that grease there. And uh, it's readily available. So now we're going to go back to this because this is, I stressed on this because now you're going to see, you're going to have your valves in here. One, two, three, four. Now there's covers that go over those valves. The cover side of the valve uses this bump here on the edge. It doesn't use the flat spot. That rides on the camshaft. That right there, that bump is what pushes the valve open. So what I usually do is, I'll get out my blister pack again. These are number 31s. It's in with the valve cover. One, two, three, four. And here's what I do. And I know a lot of people are going to say, why? You know, why do you do it? But, um, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to stuff these full of grease. I'm going to smash them down on there. Because once this engine starts, the likeliness of any kind of lubrication getting back up underneath that is going to be slim and none. Because there's no pressure in the head other than the camshaft moving. So this is what I do, guys. I completely stuff these full. Like I fill them right up. And I squash them down on there because these engines have no valve seals in them. And the only thing that I think that really keeps this engine running, because to start with these engines up for the first time, there's so much friction going on there. Like so much. When you squish them down, the grease squishes out onto the sides and it's all good. It keeps the compression within the cylinder wall. Ooh, there we go. Now, it'll eventually be a little bit funky when it first starts. But once the grease beats itself out of there and turns to a lubricant, once you get to push it down, there we go. That one's actually a little too tight. I'm going to pull that one back out. I think I put a little too much grease in that one. I'm going to put this one over here. Because that one's already lubed. A valve seal actually retains the suction into the cylinder port. So, actually, you know what? This one might be... Oh, that's good. There we go. Bang, bang, done, done. One more time. Shoot a little in there. Not a whole lot this time. Now. So, we got our tappet covers in here. That was still a little... <laughs> there we go. Push the air out. Now. Now I feel good about that. So, we'll take the shafts now. And now, these go on one way. So I'm going to get my little pliers back out here again, and I'll show you guys. These will only go one way. So, if you look at the hole there, this is actually backwards. The back, there's a slim, it's, it's offset the hole. And so is the hole in the head. It's offset. These got to come back this way. And so when you load your rocker arms on there, you make sure that you put the camshaft on one side and the lifter on the other. I know you can turn these around after you get them put together and everything, but I try to still kind of make them work. There, so... This is what you should have when you're done will be the two bumps on the bottom over here. The holes recessed all the way towards 
the uh, valves. And then these here are just followers. They'll just jump up and down. So I'm going to put these in a bag and uh, and put the clips on them because they're very, very tedious. These really small ones are so hard because I got sausage fingers. Damn it. <laughs> I got sausage fingers, so. You guys chill for a minute there. Maybe you guys take a little intermission or something, and I will put these eclips on here in my little bag, and we'll be back, and we'll finish up greasing the camshaft, and we'll be good. Okay, welcome back from intermission, guys. Now, I did have my rockers put on. I put my little eclips on there, and I lubed them up with grease because we're going to pack all this with grease in here before we put these in. So those other two chrome screws that were in the bunch over here, number 15s, the M3 by 14s, those hold your rocker arm down. So we got one, two. If you remember, these were the same ones that were within our head up here that held the head gasket tight and the head on. Now normally I would Loctite these, but I'm not going to do it at first because um, sometimes you have to loosen things up and tighten them back up again when you get an engine running. And uh, that's always been at least the way it is in my life. So we're going to pack this full of grease and make sure our camshaft is well lubed. All the lobes, just put them in there where you see them. Just fill it right up because you're going to have to pack it again <laughs> later. So I usually turn the camshaft and just like let the grease like flow over it and move to the next one and slide it over, move to the next one. You know what I mean? What you need is a good coating of grease on the lobes so they get to break themselves in. And you want some on the top of these here, too. Now, after you get it running, everything seems cool. If you have no problems with the uh, the rocker arms loosening up, then just keep rolling with it. But, you know, we have to tear the heads off these things to do maintenance. Now, I come up with this crazy idea years and years ago, and I think everybody kind of followed followed my lead on it, was to run this tube here up into the valve cover with a drain hole back here however I thought about it after a while and I'm like was it necessary or not I mean we don't know you know I mean it can be good it can be bad and I mean they did put a lot of engineering into this engine and to say what's you know What's right, what's wrong, I don't know. So, okay guys, remember the hole goes towards the glow plugs. So, this is the dawning moment, guys. We're going to put the rocker arms on this thing and try to get them fitted in there. Usually I do this. I just get the screw, put the screw in there, kind of wobble it around a little bit. You know, treat it like a biatch. And then... Normally, I'd have this together by now, but I wanted to totally teach everybody out there who's never put one of these together how to put one together. So, just take these and tighten them all the way down and give them a good snug, you know. Don't over crank them. Just give them a good snug. Later on, you can pull these out. You can put a little Loctite in them. I just get a little, kind of a, like my elbow's a torque wrench, like, when my elbow pops, it does it. I learned that from my father. And then you can turn it over and do what you want to see how it works. And guess what? It's not turning over so well. Huh, isn't that weird? This is what you have to do to test things, because when you put it together, all of a sudden there it goes. Yep, it is a ass. You know why? Because I put a little too much grease back here. You see the grease squishing out? Now, this would never start. It would never start. 
with the starter motor ever, you know, until you clean that grease out of there. So you got to let it squish out. Actually, I'm going to take that back off and take some grease out of it because there's a little too much in there. It's got way too much lift, boys. Hang on. Okay, now we're going to do our intake manifold. So, you see the bulge up to the computer. We got number 49, 48, another 49, a 50, and two 18s. So, I got the 18s out of the... Uh, blister pack here and I got my gaskets here I'll get down here got my gaskets and now we'll get our um, this is where the valve cover was we get our number 50 this is the intake manifold there's a little trick that I use I know I like the grease but just basically drop it on the floor like I just did. No. Put a little grease on the gasket there and just kind of helps it seal. And then take your spacer, put that on there like so. Now your gasket's stuck there permanently. You can line it up. It ain't going to fall off on you. And I'll get my other gasket. here we'll do the same thing with this one put a little grease on it just a thin layer just enough to make it sticky and then put on a spacer like so now you can assemble this thing without much drama Two screws first, get them through the gaskets. We're almost done with this build, guys. We're so close to being done. For all you guys, Oh, our toy and engine fans, especially with the V8. You see, uh, our friend Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks there, he actually, uh, he got one of the test engines there, and and he's going to take his and put it in his Sen Reaper build, because he's got one he bought. Right, there we go. Uh, we got the intake manifold. Make sure all your gaskets line up so the holes are open. Because uh, I know on some of the earlier engines, if you got them mixed up like that. One thing I notice about this, this is just an L200 because you'll see it's got the twin carb provisions here of the L200s. Um, and like I say, this is the cheapest RC four-stroke engine you can buy right now. Um under 200 bucks I know that it's around a buck and a half or something like that and I imagine the uh, starter kits probably um, you know gonna be additional cost on that but still you know when you guys remember when uh, um, the FS 100s came out they were like you know $250 or 260 dollars you know and then uh, when the L200s come out, there was like 300. So this one here is half the price. And you're still getting a twin cylinder L200 style engine with a single carb with the upgraded carburetor, which is cool. All right. Intake manifolds on. And we'll see what's next. You can say we're down to just a. A few last things here. 
Okay, number 18 again. Uh -oh. My little needle nose out here. One, two. And an O-ring. Number 21. It's all within this packet here. And our carburetor. Which is here. Got our carb. Ring on like so. I fumble fingers this morning because I started this build last evening. There we go. Now, you might have to push down to kind of line the holes up there and then get your screw started. I'll probably start these first. Because these are a little tough to get in there. For some reason, it doesn't look like these are the screws. Maybe they switch positions. There's 2.5. Yep. Just those are the ones. They fit through there and they thread into here. Okay. I see now. They go through this first, and then they thread into the carb body. Awful long for this, I put it that way. But the ones on my uh, V800 are really long also. They don't want them backing out. They don't want the carburetor falling off. I really didn't think I was going to have any projects um, this week to do. Um, I didn't even plan on doing any videos because I didn't get nothing in the mail. I was really surprised this showed up. Um, I do have more upcoming things that are coming in the mail, finally. Um, I guess China's on another lockdown on the western side for the COVID again. I'm pretty strict about that stuff. So It's really kind of messed up a lot of shipping. And, uh, you know, stuff has to travel from... You know place to place over there and when they lock it down like that they can't it don't happen so now now my uh my throttle arm's a little loose because that way you can put it whatever position you want but you can tighten it here with a allen wrench and i'll do that after i put it in one of my built okay now we're going to do the idler screw yeah, number threes and number twos. Up in the upper corner up here. This chrome looking bad boy is number two. And we have two number threes in this little side of the box here. And then we'll go back to our valve cover opening with the belt. And we will see right here is the adjustment now remember i said to grease up this little slot in here inside there that way you can freely move the the adjuster back and forth when you're uh 
when you're putting it together. So let me see here. Let's see what size this is. It's a big, big one. Gonna speed this up. I've been trying to use all their tools. Just to show you guys, you can put it together with all their um, tools that are in the blister pack there. Uh, it's a little tight in there. There we go. It just has to slide back and forth. Um, it has to slide, see? That's how you tighten your belt. Give it a little test slide there. Before you snug it up totally, don't even snug it up. Just kind of get the screw started in there. get our idler pulley there's the pop cover that would have been the old pan thing here's the uh, idler pulley get the big chrome screw put that in there get that started you can probably snug it up if you like I get the right tool here for the right job I probably lost it. I was moving stuff around here. There it is. Hidden right before me, right under my nose. See Johnny Q90, he's got his V8 build. Um and the auto engine build. Steve from RC Tanks and Trucks, he's got his auto engine. And um, for the price, they are pretty cheap. $149 or something, some of them are advertised for. So, now this is the big black screw that was in the, your number one bin over here on this side. This will come out of there. And that will do our fan pulley knot. I'm, I'm not putting my fan blades on until after I get everything on it with the belt. This goes through here. It goes right through the center here, like so. I'll just try to loosen that up a little bit. Get that thing fired in there. Sometimes you might have to remove it to get the belt on it. Okay, so should be starter timing belt I give you the guys a number right now B 101 MXL timing belt starter belt would be a B 88 MXL for your starter always keep that stuff on mind you know take a picture of it with your phone your camera whatever that way down the road when you have multiple engines like I do and you're like huh Let's see the belt goes like so around this way yeah we'll probably have to remove the the pulley to get it in there this is why you don't tighten it up yet because well, we're going to want to set our timing this is why I don't put the fan blades on yet because to get the belt in there and get it um, you know keep your timing marks correct okay bottom one down and this one's down like so and then you just kind of slide that belt around a couple of teeth you see it'll get loose and then when you do tighten this thing up see it'll change the position of the 
of the cam gear there, so you want to be careful with that. able to get right up close to the uh, build here because I got my camera in the way. So I'm going to do this just like so. And yes, I even have the, the slide loose. Check our timing marks as soon as I pick that up. Okay, I've got it started. You can see that the timing marks are down and down. When you look straight at it, they go straight down. Now we can finish that up. And put our fan blades on last. I always wait till last to put them on. They're very simple to do. That way when you're, we you gotta readjust the belt after you start it. Um, it's easier to do it that way. Now the exhaust is pretty straightforward here. Um, the starter bracket, which would be, and this with the oil pan and the belt. Here's your starter bracket here. Here's your spacer that they require, number 44, and a couple of screws, and the kit, our number 10s, the bracket number 51, number 10s, which for some reason, they've always used a button head. They've always used the button head screws for the starter. Now, this goes on the very bottom here down here on the back two holes here with the spacer so we'll get the spacer on here first as I keep slipping out of my hand that one they don't give you much meat and potatoes there to you know not much is there so be careful when you tighten that down don't strip it out you could probably get a longer it's just a three millimeter button head screw you could probably get a longer one if you need to I would suggest it I just snug these up for now because I am going to Loctite those. Okay, number 42s, which would be our exhaust manifolds here. And then we got one more thing in that blister pack, and that is the starter cog for the motor and the belt. Now, you look up in here, you're going to see there's only two number threes left there. 
but we need four. However, if you look over here, we got a whole packet of number threes here on this side with the gaskets. So don't panic. Just look to see if they change positions in shipping. If the number threes that are on this side are the same ones that are on the other side. So I'm going to use two of these. Because this is where the gaskets were. And we'll put the gaskets on. Number two. I'll probably edit a lot of this out. I don't think you guys want to sit here and at breakfast all this time waiting for me to get my uh, engine built. Well, you guys don't have one unless you guys have one and you want to get it built. Voila! Start a bracket. Exhaust manifold. Next is the starter. That's where it gets tricky. A couple of more number threes. Yeah, let me see how. Yeah, this might work. This way, and it even is adjustable, which I like. So, get two more number threes. I'm gonna put the cog belt on there with the starter. Okay, now the starter. You got your two number threes over here. Um, there was two number 11s for the your grub screws that go in your pulley. I usually put the pulley on first and I slide the belt over and then I just slip the, in, the starter motor on and then I'll put my attachment number threes in there. Seems a little loose but it'll probably get adjusted before it's all said and done and we'll go from there. And now we got the rocker cover. Like you say, the belt's coming to a close. We'll be firing this thing up soon, so this is pretty straightforward. And it comes in the bag. Here's your gasket. Um, try not to damage it when you take it out. It's very, very ginger. Set it on top, like so. I just kind of really. And it gets bent up in shipping. I hate that when that happens. Because then it... There we go. Our bob cover here. Our rocker cover, whatever you want to call it. Like 
so more number threes out over here Here, start one here, start one over here, kind of catty corner from it. Make sure it goes through the hole of the gasket properly. <clears throat> there we go. Remember, don't tighten all your screws up at once when you have multiple hardware going in one part. Always uh, just start them in loosely, and once they're all started, then you can tighten them all down. That way you're not stripping threads or having a screw bind when you put it in. Ta-da! So now we're basically down to the fan blades, which I will put on after I test fire it. Because ain't nothing worse than having to work around all that stuff. So believe you me, I've done it before. So I hope you build the, enjoyed the build, guys. This is a new auto single overhead cam. It's an FSL 200 AC, so this is uh, a proven, reliable engine from Toyin. Um, <clears throat> I have many of the L200s, and uh, they're, they're a pretty good engine. So, like, share, subscribe if you want. Tell your friends. Love to all, and I will catch you later.